Welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. Could be a juicy one, especially if you're interested in snow. It's turned a lot colder, as you've probably noticed, and the jet stream is partially responsible for that. This is the scenario at time of recording, a very amplified jet stream, which means it dips well to the south and then arcs way up to the north. And uh, in this arc is an area of high pressure. As expected, it's been dominating our weather for much of this week, and it's allowed things to turn on the chilly side. What we're going to see over the next few days is the jet stream becomes a little messier, less well-defined, weaker in many forms. And as I said, just a little bit messier, somewhat all over the place by the time we get to Monday. But what's happening behind me is quite important across North America. So let's head there because quite a, a wide and uh, well-defined jet stream here is splitting bifurcating is the technical term. So one arm of it does still extend up to the north, but another arm of it dips to the south. And it's that which interacts with, with this area of low pressure, which potentially brings us some pretty interesting weather as we go into next week. More on that in a moment. First of all, let's get through the rest of this week. So let's rewind the clock and come back to this area of high pressure dominating at the moment. With high pressure, the air is sinking and the winds going round clockwise. So drawing in quite a bit more cloud and moisture from the North Sea uh, over the next couple of days. But with the sinking air from that area of high pressure, it does keep things dry for the vast majority by a few scattered showers here and there. Notice this cold front is approaching. More on that as we get into the weekend. But generally speaking, with this high sitting overs for the next couple of days, for the rest of this week, it stays largely dry by the odd shower. Stays chilly, but if anything, temperatures will be ticking up a little bit through the second half of this week compared to the early part of the week. And certainly in the south, not as frosty because there will be a bit more cloud coming in as that area of pre low pressure sinks to the south and then away to the west. So that's the rest of this week. But what happens at the weekend is quite interesting. We start to see that cold front we saw earlier just pushing away the area of high pressure. So it starts to drift away to the west. That cold front probably not having much in it in terms of wet weather because it's bumping up against the high pressure. But it's followed by another and then potentially another one. And it's certainly going to be followed by the winds coming down from the north. Northerly winds obviously are going to bring some pretty cold air. So I mentioned temperatures actually rising a little bit over the next couple of days by day, but we'll notice then a drop in temperatures as these cold fronts introduce colder air from the north, initially just across the north into Saturday, but then becoming more widespread, that colder air drifting right across the country by the time we get to the end of the weekend. These weather fronts, as I say, will introduce more cloud and maybe a bit of patchy rain and a little bit of hill snow, but not a great deal as they sink southwards. But as we get into the colder air further north and the isobars squeeze together, we're going to see strong winds coming down from the north and they will generate snow showers, bringing that colder air. And these snow showers could be fairly significant, particularly when uh, attached to those strong and gusty winds as well. The Northern Isles, but parts of the north of the mainland of Scotland could see some heavy snow showers during Sunday and into Monday morning in particular, maybe even grazing parts of northeast England. So some snow showers through the second half of the weekend over northern parts of Scotland, somewhat hit and miss, but nevertheless, they, they could amount to uh, some serious dumps in places. And with that strong wind, that's an extra hazard to contend with as well. So certainly feeling cold uh, come Sunday across northern parts of Scotland once more. The cold air in place, though, right across the UK by the end of the weekend. But then our attention will be drawn to what's going on out in the Atlantic. And that area of low pressure we saw earlier, there's a lot of warmth tied into that area of low pressure. But also, as it's developing out in the Atlantic, there'll be a lot of moisture. So quite a lot of rain tied into it, too. Now, remember the process, the progress of this area of low pressure is going to be influenced by what's going on in the jet stream. Remember, it's splitting behind me there across uh, uh, North America. And it's the southernmost arm of it which then interacts with this low, which will eventually then push it towards the UK. But it's quite a complex situation. And exactly when and where it drifts up towards the uh, UK as we go into next week is the big question mark. 
Before it does, there's also the potential for more wet weather to come into northern Scotland, so we don't lose, have that northerly flow by Tuesday, the possibility of more wet weather coming in here. That could generate some more snow over northern Scotland as well. So we need to keep our eyes on that. Uh, and then from midweek onwards, eyes down to the southwest and just how this area of low pressure approaches the UK. And the computer models are handling it differently. As you would expect, we're uh, a week away and there's all those complex interactions with the splitting jet stream to deal with. I'm going to show you what the American model wants to do, the, the GFS, uh, with that milder air coming up from the southwest, bringing the milder air, but bringing also the moisture. And it's the boundary where that moisture from the low pressure hits the colder air that could generate some snowfall. Now, this is the American model uh, at uh, midnight, start of Wednesday next week. And then this is the situation by midday. So it's keeping the milder air mostly to the south and that boundary between the milder and the colder where they clash. That's where we are likely to generate some wet weather, a mixture of rain and snow in this scenario. But the European model is doing something slightly different. The same kind of general setup with low pressure approaching from the southwest, bringing the milder air, but this is a little further north. This is midnight into Wednesday, and then by midday on Wednesday, there's the low, much closer in. The warmer air is further north, and that boundary is further north, and quite a wide area of some rain, but the crosses on here indicating snowfall. So that would generate quite a bit of snowfall in this scenario. Now, looking at one computer model run, as you know, if you watch the 10-day trend regularly, it's not really how we deal with the weather in that longer term. The models are run many times in what's called an ensemble forecast, and that gives you a range of potential solutions. And that's what's showing here. I love showing these spaghetti plots. Uh, again, as I've said before, it's not my three-year-old's drawing. This is generated by the European model, and it's interesting to, to show these red lines in particular. The UK is under here. I'll zoom in and show it perhaps a little clearer. You can just about make out the UK now. And each of these red lines is indicative of when you run the model another time, uh, where the warm front is lying. So where that boundary is between the warm air and the cold air, and where we're likely, therefore, to see some snow. And when you run the model many, many times, you get the different scenarios. Again, it's not completely clear, not obvious to see, but some of those red lines are up across northern England, southern Scotland. Most of them are actually down across the uh, southwest, and the, the main model run, the deterministic, is shown there in the gold line. That is further south. But actually, most of them are, are further south still. So there's quite a bit of a, a range, a spread, as we say, of possible scenarios for where that weather front is likely to be for next Wednesday. Here's a kind of schematic view of what I've just been talking about, what's going on. That low pressure is very likely to be heading up from the southwest and bumping into the cold air somewhere across the UK. On its northern flank, we will see some snow where the moisture hits the cold air. Then further south, because that low is bringing relatively warm air, it will be turning back to rain. But it's where this boundary is and where this snowfall, that's the big question, if you like. And as you might imagine, there's a lot of uncertainty, as we've seen, those different possible scenarios. It may be that the low stays to the south and we actually don't see very much snow at all. The UK just stays in the cold air as we go through the middle part of next week. This is uh, an unlikely scenario, but it is still possible. Another unlikely but still possible scenario is the low is much further north, much more uh, developed, and the snow risk would then extend into parts of Northern Ireland and Southern Scotland. The most likely scenario is for something in between, but it's hard to say at this stage where we're most likely to see the snow, but somewhere in the zone across England and Wales, that is the most likely for scenario for some significant and potentially disruptive snow at this stage. But this is a week away, so pinning down details is not possible at this stage. We will keep you updated. 
couple of graphs now to show you the uncertainty uh, and the disparity in the uncertainty across the UK, if you like. These are the temperature trends, the meteograms from the European model. The top one is for Inverness and the bottom one is for Southampton. Again, we've shown these before on the 10 day trend. The red blobs, box and whiskers plots show the maximum temperatures and you can see here the uh, Southampton one, the maximum temperature generally staying below the average line, this red line here. And same goes for Inverness. It gets a little milder as we go through the weekend with a bit more cloud, but then another dip into next week. Now, the key thing about the Inverness one is that generally speaking through next week, uh, the main part of the box and whiskers plot is below that average line, indicating it's, it's likely to stay cold, at least until the, the very back end of the week. But what I want to show you here is the Southampton one, how suddenly the boxes expand, just emphasizing that uncertainty, that range, because this is the European model. And we saw earlier with that spaghetti plot, if that warm front is further north, that would bring pretty mild air to Southampton, whereas if it stays further south, it would be cold. So there's a lot of, again, spread, a lot of uncertainty in the temperatures as we go through next week. And of course, the temperature is crucial to the, to the phase, to the flavor of the precipitation that we see. Will we see rain? Will we see sleet? Will we see snow? For. Another way of showing that is, is looking at a different plot. This is showing the temperature for Exeter, not at the surface, but about a, a kilometre, kilometre and a half up through the atmosphere. And again, running the model many, many times, and each of these dotted lines represents a different one of those computer model outputs. The strong pink line is the deterministic model, the, the main uh, model run, if you like. And that is showing that, uh, yeah, it's going to get a little milder over the next few days into the weekend. Then those cold fronts come south and the cold air gets into Exeter by the end of the weekend, staying cold the early part of next week. And then in the European model, the main model run brings that milder air in across into the Exeter area. But notice there are a lot more of those models which keep the colder air in place in the Exeter area. So that's why there is quite a bit of uncertainty. Again, this is a week away, so nothing too unusual about this amount of uncertainty at this stage, but obviously it is crucial for determining exactly where and exactly when we will see snowfall. Now, I've mostly been talking, talking about the scenario through Wednesday, Thursday next week, but that's not, again, definite. With that uncertainty with the jet stream and where that low is, it might not just be one low that we see coming in, bringing the potential for snow in parts of England or Wales. It could happen a couple of times. And this is the scenario for Friday, the most likely scenario for Friday of next week, suggesting these numbers here that the air will still be cold, below average temperatures, and that low pressure may again be threatening to come up from the southwest. So it's not just uncertain about exactly how far north or how far south, it's exactly when we see these low pressures coming in that's also open to doubt at this stage. But again, nothing unusual about that. We're talking now 10 days ahead. So just giving you the heads up that next week, there is a reasonable chance that at some point we could see some significant snow across parts of the UK. But right now, it's too early to say where, it's too early to say when. So please stay up to date with Met Office weather forecast. Easiest way to do that, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. But of course, remember, we are uh, always right across all the social media channels as well.